I'm going to show you how to recreate the Euphoria film look. We'll have different looks side by side so you can decide which ones you like best and we'll have a light giveaway. Make sure to stick around till the end of the video and I'll pop in those instructions, get you some free gear. We got Linus here, he's an amazing film photographer. I like playing around with a bunch of different lighting to create completely different worlds. This camera is a Pentax 6x7 and it was released in 1969. Shot all of my best work on this camera. I saw you recently shot with Khalid. I shot his most recent single cover, which is awesome. I like using a projector on a site like this, which creates this almost 3D trippy photography style. How do you deconstruct it? Like, how can we recreate this image? Starting with the complementary colors, using multiple lights to kind of bounce a couple different purples and blues and maybe even a pink, potentially projecting some sort of faux bokeh on the psych wall could also add a nice touch because it looks like there's some sort of tapestry behind them that's creating that bokeh. Mm -hmm. If we can fake that out, I think we can get really close to creating a look like this. Yeah, I think that's really creative. This shot was done in a huge auditorium, right? Yeah. Having that low depth of field, I think we can get a similar effect by casting that fake bouquet on the uh, psych behind us. When it comes to this grunge look, what were you picturing with this? Yeah, this one is awesome because it's super hazy and it does give this whole like faded film look. I'm gonna leave you here to just keep brainstorming and think about the lighting setup on the psych. We're gonna go check on our models. I'm here with Kaylin and Kim. Kaylin is a content creator, a beauty aficionado. Kim is an amazing artist, and they're gonna be our models in the shoot today. What kind of look are we going for? So Kim is our Maddie, I'm the Cassie. So we're doing cool colors on her, like a little bit more like grungy industrial vibes. And then I'm more like soft, powdery, Cassie. Um, we had to throw the gems in just to kind of emulate that cover art from the series. The gems are so important to the characters. When you think about wardrobe and makeup, it really gives context to your story. Speaking of the makeup, I mean, how did you come up with this look? I really love the artist from Euphoria. She has so much intention and Sam Levinson has so much intention in everything that's done on Euphoria. It's very like natural, but the eyes always are so intentional. I think with hard light, you want to do a little bit more powder. If you're doing soft Soft light, I always recommend like softer makeup. I mean, powder always reads really well on camera. Mm -hmm. If you are doing a soft light, something that's diffused, I do think like natural, less powder. Yeah, like just less in general. So good, yeah, it looks so good. Well, you're doing an amazing job so far. I'm going to leave you two to finish up and then we can take a look at the wardrobe. I am really wondering about your gear setup here and how it's motivating your choices when it comes to lighting the psych. Today, we're gonna to be shooting with two different films that are also available in motion picture film. We'll be shooting Ektachrome 35, Ektachrome 120 medium format, and also Cinestill 800T, which is a high speed tungsten balanced color negative film, which is great for low light sort of usages and studio usages. Yeah, I'm gonna develop and scan everything on my own. How does that interact with the lights that we're about to set up? Well, we've got Ektachrome 100 in this 35 millimeter camera and then Cinestill 800T in this medium format camera. This uh, 35 millimeter camera can stop down to 1.4, which wow. is essential for a film speed this low in lower lighting. Also, Ektachrome is a slide film, so slide film's a much more nitpick thing to shoot with and that's what makes Euphoria season two that much more impressive. Like they had to have had a team of 30 or 40 people metering the scenes and making sure everything was perfect so that when they got those slides back, mm -hmm. it, looked, it looked great. We're gonna have some uh, metering challenges ahead of us. Yeah. Amazing, well, why don't we start rigging up the lights? Definitely think we can make this happen with these P60Cs, throw the color on the, the background of the psych. Yeah. We'll have kind of a key and fill situation for our talent. Yeah. Um, but you, so you're thinking like a blue and purple for the front light uh -huh. and then a pink for the back light, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, whoa, there's like a saturation dial on this? Yeah, yeah. Dude, I'm loving the cordless situation going on here with these. I know, no generator. So I'm just re-syncing this on the Citus so we can control everything wirelessly. Sweet. I didn't know that you could have a light with an app. I'm gonna be honest with you. This looks great, but we're not getting that bokeh effect because obviously there's no glittery streamers hanging down in the background. After we shoot a couple, we should bring the projector into play and project some fake bokeh onto the psych wall. Three rolls of film, three cameras. I'm gonna load the 35 millimeters. Pretty much you just take the film across the camera like this and you feed it onto the teeth on the take-up side and you just advance it until it catches and then you close it 
you fire it until you get to the one on the exposure. The cameras that I like to use are either fully mechanical, which means they don't need a battery to operate at all, or they just have a single battery in there that helps fire the shutter. Then when it comes to me just prepping my camera, you gotta be really careful about putting the SD card Dude, in. don't do this to me right now. <laughs> don't do this to me. All right, let's get into the shoot, man. Yeah, man, let's get it. This camera in particular, I am lucky enough, has an internal light meter. So I'm right now metering the scene to kind of see what shutter speed and aperture I need to rest at. Okay, so I just switched over to my medium format camera. It's got the exact same film that my 35 millimeter camera has, but it only reaches an aperture of 2.8. Just reading their faces with the light meter and then measuring. Would you say you can depend on that light meter? Yeah, for the most part? yeah. Any phone light meter is pretty accurate because it's depending on the built-in light meter that the phone uses to take digital photos. So I have a spare UV filter that I threw on this lens. This camera is a much sharper, larger film camera. So create more of like a bloomy, like hazy look that you might see in a show like Euphoria. And take the grease off of my face and put it all over the lens. Make this really awesome bloom. You'll see like some stars in there if we're lucky. I'm just gonna do it on half of it so we can get like a really interesting look. I wanna try to get a sparkle off some of this. All right, three, two, one. Projectors are a really fun element to add because your creativity does not hit a wall like it can with just like a set of LED lights. You can create anything your mind comes to when it comes to a projector. We're going for like a bokeh blur and this PNG of bokeh that I got is super low res. So there's a couple different options I can use. One that I like to use the most is just throwing the actual projector out of focus. All right, let's uh, see what we got so far. <laughs> kind of cool. Let's just see, ah, oh, it looks so cool. Once we get the images back, you won't be able to see any of the surrounding jankiness, like all these lights and the projector warped across the side wall. It's just gonna look natural. It'll look great, I think. So normally I, I feel like you would set design and, and, and bring in some practicals into the shot to get this bokeh effect, but I feel like we have a pretty good fake going on here with this projector. Three, two, one. Oh, I love that shot. Kaylin, that looks so good. So, you know, this prom scene in Euphoria was probably a pretty big budget day for them. They had to rent out a gymnasium and set up all this different creative lighting, build an entire prom scene set. But we're making our own makeshift version of this with a $75 rented projector and three portable lights that you don't even need to plug into the wall. So we're making do with uh, a lot less. I think we should squeeze just one more look in that grunge look that we were talking about in the beginning. I think we definitely should try to do that. So this light on me is pretty yellow and orange, which is the exact color I wanna use for this last grunge look that we're gonna squeeze in here. Uh, I'm gonna have two panels facing this way. You probably can't see me now, so. Blown out, hazy look on her face that then gradients into darkness behind her. Cool. Okay, this is looking pretty sweet. Okay, so pretty much with this, the greasy filter that I have going on here, it allows for me to capture more of the light on the lens and in the image than otherwise. So pretty much when I have my lens pointed at her, I'm able to kind of get some of this creeping light and it looks like rays of light, which is pretty similar to the look that they had going on um, in that photo that we are kind of basing this next shot off of. See what I mean? Oh my gosh, that looks so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, I think it's gonna be great. Two, one. Awesome. Look at how cool that looks. Mm. Wait, wow, that's amazing. Let me turn it yeah, a little let's bit. Let's move it over. So these I might feel different. Okay, well maybe we can test that then. What made you want to choose the pink color? Um, I just think pink and blue go really good together. Mm -hmm. With the contrast. Yeah. Two, one. Mm. Okay. And one, two, and three. Linus, I can already tell that these photos are going to turn out amazing. Obviously, I haven't seen them yet because we have to develop them. What's one tip you would give to people that want to start getting into film? Find a camera that is tested and working 
and trust it. It is not as hard as you think to get a great film photo. If you need more help, there's amazing resources all over the internet, like Cinestill Films YouTube, which I host, my own channel, Line of Cinestill Camera. Shameless plug, it's all good. <laughs> That's right. No, honestly, it's great content. I was watching one of your videos. It's so beginner friendly. So please Thank you. go check out that channel. So if you have any interest in learning, Everything you need to know about film photography, check out my channel, Linus and his camera, or Cinestill's channel, Cinestill Film. Well, that's a wrap. Linus, you blew my mind with all this film knowledge. If you stuck around this long, we're going to put up the giveaway instructions right now. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and don't miss the next video, because we're always having giveaways here, and we always got cool people like Linus popping into our videos, and Kaylin and Kim. So thank you guys so much for being here, and. Oh, look, we got a little whiskey sour for Linus, per his request. <laughs> Literally just waiting on the side. <laughs> Anyways, cheers, guys. Stay creative and go shoot. See you soon. That's pretty sour. <laughs> <laughs>